wonderful uh, thing. Set her free. No more sis. Let it go. Out, 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 out. Faith healing is a multi-million pound international industry. Some people judge so-called healers when doctors and medicine no could no longer help. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Set them free right now. I'm off to meet one of them who's visiting the UK and claims that God can heal people of their cerebral palsy. Get your foot off, foot off, foot off, foot off, foot off, set free now, now, now. Every condition, I command pain to go. John Meller is a healing evangelist who believes God's power travels through him to heal in the name of Jesus. John has reached great fame in his home country, in the press and national news. How do you explain it? Doctors said he'd never walk, talk or feed himself, but after this healer laid hands upon him, he can do all three. He claims his abilities came to him after he prayed and fasted for 10 days and nights in the Australian outback, that God would reach out to people and heal them, be that physically, mentally, or spiritually. Let him go right now. Got brand new knees, brand new knees. Do a number on him, Jesus. I was born with cerebral palsy and I've been a wheelchair user since I was nine. I'm really proud of my identity as a disabled person and all of my work is, is around disability and access and inclusion. But there are things that I would really like to change and I would like to be different. My foot is really, really turned and quite painful. I get really bad scar tissue pain. And of course, I'd, I'd love to get up and walk for a week or a day or whatever it may be. There's something terribly wrong in the world. Sin came into the world when man turned against God. There's wars, disease, sickness, but I always find that in the middle of the problem, God gives an answer. When doctors say you'll never walk, or you'll never hear, you never speak, or you can never have children, and all of a sudden, the impossible takes place. To me, that's a miracle. But do you think you could heal Emily? Or? Okay, for a start, John Mellor can't heal anybody. But Jesus can. And I never guarantee anything. The evening before the healing session, I decided to prepare by watching some of John's online videos. There's 3,000 plus miracles on his YouTube channel. Is it the course from? I've watched this one a few times, actually. This seems to be the first one that comes up if you Google John Mellor wheelchair. So of course it, it was the one that took my interest the most. In the name of Jesus, let this woman right now set her free. Yeah. Oh. Free, get your foot up, 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 foot up. In the name of Jesus. Whoa. It's very, very entertaining. And then from then, really, everyone gets excited, everyone gets hyped up, and that person, if they feel able to, gets up and tries to walk if they're in a wheelchair. Yep. Um, and I have to say, I've not seen one where they're not able to do that yet. Yeah. <laughs> there is the possibility of giving donations, and that's quite actively encouraged on John's website. Something that's quite concerning when there are people returning again and again to be healed, but have seen no substantial improvement. To find out more, we spoke with Andy Lewis, a science writer and alternative medicine critic. There are extraordinary claims being made, and uh, as has been said many times, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and as uh, far as I'm aware, there is no evidence at all that there's any long-term impact from such uh, practices. I always tell people, don't give up, keep coming. And so they came to the second meeting, wasn't much change. When people come and they start to see God heal people, their heart rises up and says, you know what, if God can heal that person, maybe God can heal me. The next morning, I arrived at the church wondering what John had in store for me. 
see you later. <laughs> Likewise, it's going to be a fantastic day. Absolutely, thank you. It's going to be wonderful. It's so good to have you here. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Hello, how are you doing? Welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's just about to start, just hearing the welcome, and I think there's going to be music. Lifting up the name of the God of all creation, the only one who's worthy of adoration. It's a great privilege and a real honour to welcome John and Julie Meller. Let's give them a great welcome this morning. It's just a wonderful day for miracles. And the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Today you will see the power of God flowing in the sick body, in the sick minds and set people free. In your name, Jesus, I come out infirmity, go in Jesus' name. Pain, go in Jesus' name. Cancer pain, I decree healing right now for cerebral palsy. Every condition, I command us to leave in the name of Jesus, be healed. In front of an audience of 500 people, John attempted to perform so-called miracles for those who had travelled far and wide with a variation of conditions. Shogun's disease, pain, arthritis, off his hips, off his body now and heal her emotions to God. I think a true miracle is when something happens that uh, transcends our sense of physical reality, really, that has no rational explanation. Jesus, I declare a miracle free! And miracles demand close scrutiny. Come on, there's power in that name of Jesus! <laughs> How you feeling, mate? Oh, amazing. <laughs> wow. John's showmanship was electric, and it almost felt like the power of Jesus had entered the whole church. Timber! <laughs> right now, it's a fora, spot a lay, spot a lay, spot a lay. It's a fora, 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 fora. What's happening to you, mate? It feels like I'm on coke. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't get better with coke. But there's actually, there's actually a, there's a lady here, man, in your stomach. It's like this bloating and tender. Just come out here. I'm reminded of um, mind readers, if you like. Man, you get migraines, and right now you've got a real terrible, terrible headache. They're saying things that almost certainly will resonate with some people in the You're audience. Your head just throbbing. Where are you? Is that you? And when someone comes forward, it looks like a, a miracle. Just come out here. There's a set of rules and expectations about what the crowd are expecting from him, almost like a pantomime, really. OK, bend down, bend down. How, how's that? Amazing. So, so how long it be that you could do that? He'll emphasise the hits he gets uh, and de-emphasise the misses, as if they didn't really happen. But bend down, touch your toes. How's that? It's actually not feeling anything. No pain. No, no. If your expectations are that you're going to feel, feel better in a certain situation and there's a lot of theatre in such an environment and that theatre adds to the sense of occasion and then people f do feel better in feeling? the moment. Pain on my left is gone. Give a hand, everybody. An hour later, the next day, it's very questionable that, that they're going to still sustain that. Soon enough, my time had come to be healed. God bless you, Emily. Just can we reach out for Emily? Come on, this power in that name, power in that wonderful name of Jesus. Straighten. God begin to straighten this leg right now. Straighten. That's a ligaments, tendons. Free, 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 free. Shoo! Jesus, touch Emily right now. God, I command right now, come against your palsy, touch your brain right now, I command pain to go right now. Set her free in the name of Jesus. God, touch her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, this is what? No. Jesus, more. Strength. Oh, pain to go. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. 
Break this. Release. Release. Life. Life. Give it Life. Give it Begin to straighten this body right Take now. No more Strength pain. Thank you, Jesus. Strength to those legs. Thank you, Jesus. Can you feel any pain or discomfort? Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit tired because I'm taking lots of weight okay. on my arms. Can you feel pain though? Not on my legs because these guys are taking it all no, for me. Think, what, what I'm going to say, would it be normally painful to do this? Uh, yes. But you don't feel it now? Not at the moment, can no. Give a lot of hand. Can you take more weight on your feet? Thank you, Jesus. She might need a seat. So, sit, sit it down, sit it down. Now, this is very important. We see some people in a wheelchair walk instantly, bang. Other times is a process. So how are you feeling now? I don't think there's any change yet, but I'm willing to keep going. But you're up without pain? Yeah. So, 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 so normally, normally how bad would the pain be like that before? It takes time for the pain to kind of get into my legs, so it's it's almost that that waiting for the pain to develop with just standing for too long. Give Emily a hand. What a good sport. God bless you, Emily. And maybe... Maybe guys, clean the deck, fellas. Clean the deck. To be honest, I wasn't surprised that it hadn't worked, but it was interesting to see that John made such a celebration of the fact that the pain that wasn't there to begin with had apparently gone away. I don't personally believe that people are crooks and charlatans. I think uh, uh, they believe in what they do. They might get carried away with their own uh, beliefs and experience of what's happening around them. and. If they're doing anything wrong, I think it's probably perhaps they're not being circumspect enough about their own capabilities. What do you say to people that say uh, healing and what you do is fake? Well, all I ask them to do is talk to people who've been healed. Very simple. Just talk to them. When I pray, the power of God is so strong, people will feel strange sensations. Sometimes they feel heat, they feel tingling, they feel cold sensations. Some people feel nothing. I don't fully understand all of it. <laughs> how you feel? Move your back. That's how it is. Sometimes it's spontaneous. I just go. Choo, choo, choo. It's crazy. Oh, Even more Jesus. There's something else getting involved here, and it's God. It's Jesus. <laughs> Give him more Jesus. Uh, there's some people who make their whole whole lifehood out of deceiving people. They charge large amounts of money and they have big promises, and, uh, and what, what, what we offer is free. It's, no one has to pay anything, no one has to give a cent, and I'll pray for them as, as long as they want me to pray for them. I spoke to other people about their healing experiences. Usually I can't stand, but I've walked in and I've stood at the back and uh, I ain't sat down. I, I felt God touching me and I felt like heat over my body. John prayed for me and he broke the power of witchcraft of my life. It's the last hope, so we believe that it will be a miracle here in England. How many meetings have you been to? Uh, with John, probably about a dozen. Okay. And every time I've seen so many amazing things, do I believe every single one? Uh, I'm not sure I do, but I've seen and I've spoken to people who've been healed of all sorts of things. Wow. Quite amazing. And what's happened to you specifically? Anything? Have you seen any change? Not at this point, okay. but I'm still fully believing I'm going to be well. I will not die and live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. and he's got motor neuron disease and he's absolutely desperate to have more time with his wife and his children. Absolutely desperate and this visiting John Mellor a dozen times is his way of, of trying to kind of calm that desperation by taking action and by doing something about it. But it's when that faith, the healing and the physicality of stuff come into play that I'm still really not sure. Where I'm, where I'm at with it, and whether or not it's complete and bullshit. To be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've got to say that very quietly because we're still here. <laughs> After the session, I couldn't stop thinking about how much of a performance it all was. 
pain is very subjective, isn't it? So for him to then put you under and say, do you feel better? And then you say, yes, all my pain's gone. I do think that there's a little bit of a game and a little bit of a performance that people play if they're really that desperate and they really want to be healed. Tomorrow is my opportunity to sit down with John, just the two of us, and to basically have it out. I want him to persuade me and I want him to prove me wrong. Whether he does or not is, a, is another question entirely. Roll cameras. How are you? Hey, it's great Good to, to see, see you again. again. I'm great. Have a seat, please. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Is there anything that I'm doing wrong? No. In fact, what I always tell people, if you come again, I keep praying. Is it possible to not want to be healed enough and therefore it doesn't happen? Yes, yeah, true. That can happen? That's true. Because I've met people who've said that to me. I met a guy called Andy who um, has motor neuron disease. So he's kind of followed you all over yeah. the place. He said to me that, you know, as of yet, nothing's happened. Well, for a, for a start, I can't get my hand around it. I wish I saw every single person healed. I wish I could see everything perfect, but I don't. Is there a moment where you think it's almost more appropriate to say to somebody like Andy, go home, spend time with your wife and your kids, spend those final months that you have because you've been to 12 meetings and it's not happening. I don't know, to me it's up to the person. And, th and things nobody knows, I mean, who, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. But if I can encourage them, because some people don't have any hope. And to me it's worth for the ones who do get touched and there's something they've got to make up. Um, at the beginning of the meeting yesterday, um, and I, I guess you do this at most of your meetings, um, you kind of were saying, oh, there's somebody here that's got a horrendous headache, there's somebody here that's got a problem with the womb, there's somebody here that has got really, really bad stomach pain and, and you know, I've been told to, to help them. And many times I feel like I'm a third person. It's like, I don't try and process things, I just pray mm. and things happen. Obviously, obviously, I've read your material and um, I've looked a lot on your YouTube channel and your Facebook pages and things like that. And I cannot find one negative comment. Not one. So how much do you modify, I don't modify the response anything. you get? Nothing. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, occasionally someone puts some silly thing on your Facebook. But you, you, see, when stuff, people do stuff on a blog, you can't control that, it goes, you know, you can't control a lot of stuff you that goes out. You can delete out. people that comment on your YouTube videos. You can delete their Oh, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can, you um, can. We, 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 actually, we actually don't get that many comments on our, on our YouTube. You know, some people uh, judge me because they haven't, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're after the money, you're trying to rip people off, you're taking old ladies' pants, you know, people got strange ideas. I never set out to do this. I never planned this. It just happened. It just all of a sudden I found myself in newspapers doing stories, reporters coming and TV cameras coming and, and I wasn't too sure how to handle the media. I really like you. I like you too. But I can equally <laughs> understand how people would look at the situation and they'll say, man, he's, he's preying on some pretty vulnerable people there and there's people who are getting disability allowance and they're spending all the money to go and see him and they're not seeing any results. Even watching those YouTube videos, all 5,000 of them, it still doesn't give a viewer any hard evidence. It's very, very difficult to actually say, this guy's totally legit. I think what you're saying is fair, is fair enough because really we shouldn't always just look at everything and take it on face value all the time. But that's why I tell people, come and have a look, see for yourself, make up your mind, and, and, and that's how it is. And I've been on the other side, and I, I can fully understand where people are coming from. And how did you feel about it? I, I thought it was a rip-off. One thing that I guess put me off before I met you was the terminology that you use, words like crippled yeah, and real, suffers from that. and wheelchair bound. I almost felt like I couldn't be proud of my disabled identity yeah. and come and see you. Yeah. First, first of all, and they want to apologise for that because, because I'm still learning and I, you're the first person who's told me that 
And um, so I will change that. Thank I'll, you. I'll, yeah, I really will. Thank you. But it's sometime in the media, BBC, main media, it's Christians, we cop bigotry, etc. too, we tags, con man, all of that. We have to wear this, this is Julie, the terms Julie, too. Julie, it's okay. Uh, so how do you say someone in a wheelchair was healed? Like, is that wheelchair user? Yeah. Yeah. Wheelchair user. Uh, just a lot of the um, no, interview, Julie. I know John's getting tired. No, no, I just want to make one point. I would go to sleep just thinking about the people that went away still suffering, what's going to happen to them. But because we do this every weekend, you think, I can't wear every un person I don't see healed on the spot. It would be the same thing with doctors. You can't emotionally involve yourself. All you can do is pray as best you can and hope that they'll be healed. It's been a week since the healing session and a time for reflection. I'm off to meet Andy to find out more about his situation and why he turned to John. I guess the background, married to Jane, three boys, about three years ago, you know, there were some issues with, with my movement and I went uh, ultimately to the uh, neurologist mm -hmm. and then he uh, diagnosed me with uh, motor neuron disease. I said, how long uh, do you have? Because there is no cure at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, 80% of people have less than two years. Why, why John? You know, was it real was my question? Was it underpinned by the Bible? Was it uh, some weirdo? And, you know, I think it's easy to say he's a charlatan or he's this or that. But, uh, you know, I think they do it because of genuine reasons. And I've seen with my own eyes the, uh, the impact it can have. Has anything changed since then? I don't know is my honest answer. I, uh, I feel after that meeting more positive, but I'm not running around. You know, a lot of people look at life and think about the end and think about a hopeless end. And the way I'm looking at it is I've got an endless hope. You think you're indestructible and you think you've got a clear path through life and then it is radically interrupted. I think the hardest thing for me is thinking if, if the healing doesn't come and then what? And that's gonna to be tough. But life without my best friend be rubbish, really. If? If the healing doesn't come. But we, yeah. I will not die. Just yet. The doctors are saying, no, sorry, we can't help you. There's no cure yet. You're doing really, really well. You've lasted longer than we thought you would. Go home and enjoy your time. What are his other options? He has none. He has no other option. And I guess that's really hard because I keep hearing of all of these like amazing miracles that are happening and all these people with these horrendous illnesses that are getting healed and all we saw was people with sprained ankles and headaches and frozen shoulders feeling better. I don't even go there in my thoughts. I don't even think about it. I can't afford to. I've got one track that's to encourage people and love them. I never know that something's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know. 